welcome to the Riverside Township Senior Exercise Class. Welcome to you. I am Kim Wade. I'm founder of Inner Gaze Yoga. I'm also founder of the Inner Circle, Healthy Habits for Wild Women Over 40. Rawr, come on, rawr, do it with me. Today's class, we're going to be stretching our inner body. That's our breath. Big class, big breaths are what we're looking for. So grab your chair, an open heart, some curiosity, and your wild self. Hello, hello, welcome back to you guys. So today we're gonna to be talking about feeling our feelings. So I just wanna remember what I had just said a few minutes ago. I want you to think about it as we're working because today requires a lot of curiosity. So you could pretend you're like pulling a beard. Very interesting, very interesting. The whole time it's very interesting, very interesting, okay? We want to have a curiosity in this. So part of yoga the whole goal of yoga actually is to know yourself can you imagine like if you really knew yourself that means you're good you're bad you're ugly all the stuff you know yourself and you have compassion like you have compassion for yourself because the idea is when you have compassion for your good bad and ugly then you have compassion for my good bad and ugly right so you get to practice on yourself that's why we say yoga practice and not yoga perfect so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing some challenging poses and if you were here with me live, I would say, what do you feel in that pose? And people will say, I feel good, I feel better, I feel worse, I feel bad. And those are all just judgments, right? That's not curious, that's sort of perfectionism. But what we want to go is thinking about it from a sense of curious, very curious, where we're thinking about that feels burning or that feels crunching or that feels a little bit limiting. You want to be noticing what words you use to describe these feelings because as you learn to do it physically, in this physical body, we could do it with our emotional lives too, right? Body, mind, and spirit, they're all related. I like to tell a joke, it doesn't matter what you eat, doesn't matter how thin you are or how much you exercise, if you're angry all the time, you're not healthy, right? So we body, mind, and spirit. You ready? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, as always, is we're going to check in. Check in. See how we slept, see how we're feeling. So just take a moment, maybe shake it off, do some sort of fancy dance here where you're just letting the day go. Maybe you've had some conversations today. Maybe you haven't talked to anybody, right? Just all the things that are in your heart right now, in your body. How am I presenting today? How am I presenting today? How's that back of mine? How's the arthritis? Is it fired up? How would you describe it if we couldn't judge it? One of my favorite mantras is, I'm so fascinating. <laughs> I'm just so fascinating. You're just so fascinating. Just go in there and see what are you presenting with today? How's the neck? How's the shoulders? How's that achy hip? And I'm really asking how your achy hip is. Notice if you just went to an automatic answer, right? Is it achy today? Maybe it's not so much. So really studying yourself from this moment, this moment right here and right now. What's up for you? First step of mindfulness is noticing what I'm presenting with. Number two is can I just be with it? And sometimes the answer is no, right? Sometimes we don't want to be with our pain, right? Sometimes we don't want to be with our grief or our aches, right? All that's true too. And if that's the case for you, if you don't want to be in it, then I'm going to recommend something else because some days mama said there'd be days like this, right? Mama said there would. All right, so here's the other option. If you don't want to just sit with it, if you don't want to just have some space with however you're presenting, your other option is to start to notice the breath, that inner body, okay? So remember, we're feeling our feelings here. We're feeling what our senses are. So we're going to just watch ourselves breathe instead. So you're either sitting with whatever's happening in your body, or if your mind needs something to focus on, 
I want you to count how long your inhale is and how long your exhale is. We'll be doing this for one more minute, turning on that inner gaze. It's nice that we can do this together, right? We can be here together noticing the breath. And so now let's all start to focus our mind like a camera lens on our breath. Everybody come together now, watch yourself breathe. And I'm gonna ask you some really curious questions about the breath. And I want you just to notice, okay? Does your breathing feel choppy today? It's not good or bad, it just is. Is it choppy? Or does it feel smooth? See if you can notice that. How about deep? Does it feel deep or is it more shallow? Do you feel like you hold your breath sometimes? Sometimes we take an inhale and then we wait before we exhale. Are you doing that? Or are you exhaling and then holding before you inhale? Again, there's no right or wrong. We just want to notice how we're showing up. Are you holding the breath somehow? And I just heard someone out there go, when are we going to do yoga? <laughs> Why don't we have to do this? This is what it is. This is what it is. Exercise is not yoga. Yoga is not exercise. Remember, it's getting to know ourselves. It's knowing where we are so we know how to begin. So one more breath here, whatever's happening for you, because it's the yoga. And let's bring our hands together. My teacher used to tell me, yoga begins the moment you want to leave, right? As soon as you want to stop doing something, that's when the yoga practice really begins, when you start to get irritated, okay? So that's what we're going to focus on today is getting irritated. Doesn't that sound fun? That's so fun. Let's come to standing. Now standing, um, as always, we want to have our feet hip distance apart. So the hips right here, these little bony bones, right over the knees, right over the second, third toe. This is called mountain pose, or we call it Tadasana. And this posture, I love it because you're standing on your own two feet. Now, if for some reason you got a knee thing today or a hip thing today and you don't wanna do it, you can always take mountain here in the chair, right? But for those of you who feel like you're wanting to come up on your own two feet, you wanna stand up nice and tall, I want you to feel where in the body you are presenting on the feet. Do you feel like you're leaning on the outside edges? Do you feel like maybe you're turning your toes in? Are you pushing the weight into the heels, locking up those knees? Can you find the front of those toes a little bit more? So just taking a moment here to stand here in mountain pose, taking your head right on top. As always, just a little tuck of the chin and feel yourself in mountain. This is powerful. It's a powerful pose. And in truth, this pose is inside every pose we do. It doesn't matter what pose we're doing. This is what we want to be finding, this shape. Okay, so that's our lesson today. Very curious, right? Very curious. How am I going to keep this action? Three more breaths. Now, how would you describe this pose to me? How does it feel in this posture for you? Unsteady? Powerful? Elegant? Wobbly? So I want you to think of three words, three words that you would describe it to me with. How does it feel to stand in mountain? It's 
hard to come up with those words sometimes, isn't it? I'll describe it for you. I can feel myself really standing more on my right foot. So I would say that I kind of feel like I'm leaning a little bit. I feel a pulling sensation on my left collarbone. I feel kind of graceful too, though. How would you describe it? What about if you turned it on by breathing really deeply? Two more big old breaths. When you brush your teeth, when you do your dishes, this is a pose to practice. Big, big, powerful pose. All right, let's put our hands on our hips. Some of you can go up on a releve, which is up on our tip tips, and then dropping the heels down. And we'll do that again, up and down, and up and down, two more, up and down. Bend your knees. Some of you will be able to boop. Some of you are like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. You're going to open. But those of you who can, maybe a little bit of a bunny hop, okay? If that feels safe for you. If it doesn't, you don't have to do it, of course. Now we're going to turn our left hip out. This hip is a chain. So when we turn that hip out, it happens from the top. So I want you to close that hip. And then I want you to open it. And then I want you to close it. And then I want you to open it. It's all happening from the hip, not the knee. And this is very, very important as we start to move today, okay? So you're moving it from the top. One more. And neutral. Switch a ruby. Take the other one. Open and close and open and close. We could pretend that we're in Wizard of Oz, the Tin Man, juicing up those hips. And three. And four. And five. Good. So now let's focus on the chain, right? That there's a chain that has to happen. We want to be opening and closing from the top of the hip, not the knee. So let's practice that. Let's open our legs. Let's open this left hip. Okay, we want to make sure that the whole kneecap is sitting over that second, third toe, opening and closing from this hinge. Five. And four. How's that feel? It's like the Tin Man, right? You're juicing it up. I like to say the motion is lotion, right? Motion is lotion. Juicing up those joints a little bit. Two. And one. And close. Good. Let's go to the other side. We're going to open and close four more times, right? Because as we get older, we get a little bit dry. Our skin gets dry, our hair gets dry. Well, our joints get dry too. And so part of keeping them supple is having these movements. So you want to make sure you're being safe with your movements and you're noticing how they feel. Last one. Right? How's that feeling? You ready for some more? We're going to come and take our chair. If you have a chair nearby, or you could even use a table. So what we're going to do is we're going to find that mountain pose again, right? Find that mountain pose. But we're going to open our legs, and we're going to spin open the right toes. Now there's a line of energy from the right heel to the left arch. I want you to double check that you actually have that. So go ahead and look down. The right heel is in line with the left arch. If I were to bring it back, I would be like this, okay? That's important for our knees and it's telling our hips that we're keeping them safe. Take your hands onto your hips now. Remember the song, I'm a little teapot? That's what we're gonna play. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Sing it with me. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. When you tip me over, hear me shout. I don't remember the end of the song. <laughs> Here we go. Taking it over now, feeling this thigh pulling back, and we're going to take the hand to the chair. I'd like you to have the hand right underneath the shoulder. Okay. Again, we want the bones to be nice and safe here. 
Most of you will have your belly looking at the floor. Can you use this, these muscles in the abdominals to start to turn the torso? If there feels like a lot of pressure in this right wrist, some of you might even take that left arm to the sky. If that feels too pinchy on your shoulder, you can keep that hand to the hip. Whatever feels right for you. Some of you might be a little bit more flexible. You could take the elbow down. You know what's fun about teaching all levels is that you get to see where you were and you get to see where you're going. So if this is like, how's she doing that? Just think about it. I do it because I practice, right? Maybe you'll get to this point too where you could take it down. So here's the question, that curious part. What do I feel here? and where. What do I feel here in this posture and where? If I'm trying to find my mountain pose, right, how do I find that mountain posture? And where do I feel it? So we've got about three more breaths. Move your breaths. One more deep one. Put a soft bend in your knee to keep it safe and pull yourself up. And we're going to turn this hip closed very gently. Take your time and very carefully walk your feet together and return to our mountain pose and receive. I like to put the elbows close to the ribs, palms facing up. Find my breath again, long spine, easy breaths. I can hear some of you saying that was good. Remember, that's a judgment. We don't want to say it's good. What is it? Does it feel strong? Do you feel more open? Do you feel like ease? Should we do the other side? Yeah, we should do the other side. Here we go. Take your chair to the other side, or you can pivot yourself around. Same thing, we're looking for this pose in this one. It's called triangle. One of my all-time favorite poses to do every day. Left heel in line with the right arch. I really want you to look down and make sure you're doing that because we want yoga to be very safe. We want to love our practice. We want to know that we're held and nurtured in these poses. We don't just want to throw ourselves unsafely in them. So double check that you've got that alignment because that's going to keep your knees healthy. And then we're going to be a teapot. And I'm not going to sing this time, so I want you to do it. Here we go. <laughs> Come on now. The reason I like to teach it this way, where we do it a few times, is it's a, a type of vini yoga, it's a type of therapy yoga, therapeutic yoga, where you're telling your body what you're expecting of it. So by going in and out a couple of times, the body starts to trust you, and then it starts to open to you a little bit more. One or two more times. Tip me over and pour me out. That's the end. Okay, here we go. Hand comes right under the shoulders. I'm asking my bones to do the work here, not my muscles, not my ligaments. And then I'm gonna either take my hand to the hip and I'm gonna find that mountain pose or some of you might even take your arm up to the sky. Another option is to keep the fingertips on the shoulder. I want you to feel very comfortable here, okay? What does this feel like and where? One way you can know if you're getting more and more into your practice is if you start to see some subtleties between the difference between your left side and right. It's like, oh, my left hip is a little tighter or my, my calf on the other leg was a little bit more stretching. You'll notice those little details because again, we're so fascinating. Aren't you so fascinating? Maybe you're bringing that elbow down. And remember what you're wearing on the face. It's always so funny to me to see yoga people with like scowls on their face. So double check that you've got a nice little face happening, that you're enjoying what you're doing. Breathing deeply and then how would you describe it? Three more breaths. What would you say about this posture? No judgments at all. We're learning how to know ourselves. 
stepping into that spirit, right? Living our best life right here, right now. One or two more deep breaths. Ah, I just love yoga. I love yoga. One more. Put a soft bend on your knees so you keep it safe, and we're going to come on out. Now here we're going to do what is called downward dog. We're not going to do full downward dog. Close this hip. We're going to use our chair, but first let's process. What are you noticing? How's the breath? Have you been able to keep that breath? Let's stretch it out. Take your hands flat on the chair. Some of you may want to hold the edges of the chair if you feel at all unstable. Take your hands to the chair and then notice where my ears are, right? They're far away. But if I walk back a little bit, and I keep going, and I keep going, and I keep going, I can bring my ears aligned with my shoulders. Some of you will notice your hamstrings here. You can always bend your knees. Now either you're grabbing the edge of the chair, or your hands are on the chair. Whatever's happening for you, drop your chin. And then let out a big old, oh my goodness, this feels so good. Come on, let me hear you. Oh my goodness, this feels so good. Keep bending your knees. If your belly is in the way, open those legs. Let it all hang out here. Ah, three more deep breaths. What are you feeling here? What are you feeling? How would you describe it to someone? I feel so safe. I feel nurtured. I feel loved. I feel like my body's opening. What are you noticing? Last inhale, exhale. Beautiful. We're going to start to walk forward to the chair again. Bend your knees and come on up. What you think? This one's a good one, right? Every single day. All right, we're going to end with what we call Eagle Pose. Eagle Pose is a lovely way to open up that back. But again, you want to make sure you're happy here. So you find a level that works for you. We've got the chain turned on. I'm going to cross my knees, okay, like I'm sitting in a chair, because you know what? I'm sitting in a chair. Try that. How does that feel? Now to keep my knee safe, I need to press through that right big toe. We're going to take our arms open like this, and we're going to spread the taffy. Big inhale, and then exhale. Let's do it again. Inhale, spread the taffy. It's like you're pulling a rubber band. Exhale. Two more. Inhale, open it up. Now, special challenge for you all out there. Are you doing something weird with your head? Are you keeping those ears level? Check and see how you're moving. Are you dropping it? Are you doing something weird? Keep the head nice and neutral. It's so challenging to do. Now, our right leg is on top. That means we have to put our left arm, so it's the opposite, and we're going to give ourselves a hug. And I mean it. Like, Really give yourself a hug, especially if you've done real well this week. It's like, nice job, really nice job. Good stuff. Oh, it's good. It's good stuff. Hug yourself like you would hug your grandchild or someone you love so much. Like, really take this time to give yourself a hug. Not only does it feel amazing, but your shoulder blades are moving away from the spine. And you know what that does? It gives you a longer neck. Right? Some of you might come all the way to fancy pants, eagle pose, but that may not be happening for you. But if you can, go ahead and do it. If not, I want you just to hug. Tuck your chin and then lean forward. How do you find mountain pose here? 
<sighs> what are you noticing about yourself here? So nice. One more deep breath. And gently releasing the arms, roll yourself up, up, up. Open those arms and pause. Let's take our neutral legs again and turn our head. I do like it when folks practice this in the mirror because what I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm talking about. People turn their heads like this. They crunch their neck. So when we're turning our head, we're trying to keep the ears level. So it's a good thing to practice in the mirror. See if you're doing that. Most of us do. All right, let's flip a ruby. Take our left leg up. Push through that big toe. Okay, we're gonna take those arms nice and wide. Do you remember which arm would go on top if that left leg is on top? The right arm, so it's the opposite. That way we're finding balance. And there's that hug again. Nice job. Some of the good dinner you had last night. But whatever it is, just give yourself a big old hug. You know, there is skin hunger is a real thing. You know, when babies are born, they like touch. Skin hunger is real. So giving yourself self-touch is part of yoga too. Giving self-massage, you know, using your fingers, doing the walking on your muscles and finding those pressure points and massaging your head. All that's part of yoga. Such a nurturing practice. All right, some of you fancy pantsers can come into full eagle arms, but maybe that's not accessible to you. And we're going to sit up nice and tall, and then we're going to, like, we're hugging over a big old beach ball. Start to drop yourself and feel that spine. Feeling the way this feels. How does it feel around your lower back? How would you describe that? How about in the middle back? How about the neck? <sighs> so nice. And we'll take ourselves back up again. Open those taffy arms and release those hands down. Come back to your neutral. And this time we're going to turn our head. Turn our head. And we're going to finish up with some lateral stretches. And that means we're going to hook our arm, grab the hand on the, on the chair, and we're going to lean over. Lean away from that arm. Can you feel that stretch? How would you describe that sensation? Is it a pulling? Is it a tugging? Two. Beautiful, drop your chin to your chest. Come up and we'll finish one more side here. Take the left hand and reach away. You did some good work today. And some hard poses, but every single day getting inside our bodies, right? Animating these bag of bones of ours. We can do it with our breath, and we can do it with that motion is lotion. Feels so good. One more big breath. Beautiful. Come back to center. Lean back if you want to. Find a posture that feels suitable for you. And we'll take one minute of just breathing. For me, I would sit in full gratitude that my body can do these things. It's not perfect, but I can do these movements. So feeling that gratitude. So appreciative that you're here, that we're here together, and that our bodies do these movements.
light. As always, may this work be of benefit to you. Thanks for joining me and sharing your time. Deep bows to you all. Namaste.